Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Turning to demand and supply, demand is the willingness and ability of the buyers, of the consumers, of the purchasers to purchase a product. Yeah, a product is a good or a, a service. It is the quantity of the good that the consumers wish to buy at different prices. At higher prices, less will be demanded. Yeah, but as the prices fall, more will be demanded. That is demand. Supply, on the other hand, is the willingness and ability of the producers, of the marketers, to offer a good or service for sale. It is the amount of good that is being sold onto the market by these producers. At higher prices, it is more profitable for firms to increase supply, so supply curve slopes upward. Let us take a look at these graphs. Supply and demand illustrate the working of a market and the interaction between suppliers and consumers. And this supply and demand curves determine the price and the quantity of goods and services. Yeah, so any changes in supply and demand will have an effect on the equilibrium, price and quantity of the goods sold. So it will also affect the incentives for producers and consumers. So here, okay, what is equilibrium price? Yeah, it is the only price where the desires of consumers and the desires of producers agree. Yeah, that is where the amount of product that consumers want to buy, yeah, in which the quantity demanded is equal to the amount of producers want to sell, yeah, where it is the quantity supplied. So that is demand and supply. So you need to understand Okay, what does it mean by demand? What does it mean by supply? Demand is the willingness and ability of the buyers to purchase a product at different prices. And supply is the willingness and ability of the producers to offer the goods or services uh, for sale. Let us discuss on the subtopic of economic stability. What does it mean by stability? Stability is a condition in which the amount of money available in an economic system and the quantity of goods and services produced in it are growing at about the same rate. However, stability can be threatened by certain factors which are inflation and unemployment that we will discuss afterwards. Yeah, I guess everyone has heard on what is inflation. Is it good or is it bad? Think. Good or bad? All right. Inflation occurs when an economic experiences a widespread price increases. It is when a currency experiencing drop in value over time. So, is it good? Is it bad? All right. Yeah, uh, there are few discussions about it actually. So minor inflation is normal. Yeah, it shows that the economy is growing. We are experiencing a, a healthy economy if there is a minor inflation. However, when the inflation grows too quick, money loses value at a very quick rate, the entire economy can spiral out of control. So countries fight inflation through government regulations and usually they will adjust to the monetary policies at the central bank. So which one is better? High or low inflation rate? The problem with high inflation rate is that even with cost of living increases, 
there is a time lag between the cost of goods increases and when you get your raise, the raise in your wages, in the salary, right? For instance, the increment of raise is on a yearly basis, okay? but the cost of goods increases from time to time on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis. Okay? So the businesses are being forced to raise the prices. The banks needs to raise the interest rate in order for them to maintain the profit margin. So this high rate means marginal businesses will fail, thus increasing unemployment that will harm the overall economy. So inflation is good to the economy, but it must be controlled. Okay? On the other hand, deflation is a typically a sign of weakening economy. It means the economy is shrinking. Okay? So there is a reduction of money supply if the country is experiencing deflation. Okay? Economies fear deflation because falling prices lead to lower consumer spending, which is a major component of economic growth. Okay, the spending of the consumer is a major component of economic growth, right? So companies respond to these failing prices by slowing down their production, which leads to layoffs and salary reductions. In so Malaysia and most of the countries around the globe were and currently experiencing deflation since 2019 because of the COVID-19 pandemic. However, Malaysia inflation returned to positive in February this year. The second factor that will give threat to the economic stability, as I've mentioned earlier, is unemployment. Unemployment occurs when a person who is actively searching for work is unable to find any. For your information, Malaysia's unemployment rate rose 4.5% in 2020. It is the highest rate recorded since 1993, according to the Department of Statistics, Malaysia. It means the number of unemployed individuals increased. So this is due to the adverse impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Usually, this unemployment is related to recession. Recession is a period during which aggregate output as measured by real GDP declines. It is actually a period of economic contraction in where businesses see less demand and they begin to lose money. It is actually quite a stress situation in the economy. The businesses tend to cut costs and they will experience losses. Companies begin laying off workers and these will generate a higher level of unemployment. Okay? And for your information, yeah, a long-term recession will lead to depression. So what is depression? What does it mean by depression? It is a prolonged and deep recession. As for Malaysia, we faced recession back in 1985, 1998, and then it was in 2008, and latest was in 2020, last year. Okay, but we are still in the recovery stage. Okay, so among the general causes of this recession, are the loss of confidence in investment and the economy, high interest rates, deregulation of the government, deflation, post-war, eh? uh, fall falling houses prices and sales, and one of it is COVID-19 pandemic, okay, and many more. Finally, we have come to an end of this chapter, uh, which is on managing the economy. Okay. 
So there are two sets of policies uh, the government use to manage the economic system. Okay, these two policies make up the stabilization policy. Right? Um, stabilization policy is government economic policy intended to smooth out fluctuations in output and unemployment and to stabilize prices. So these two sets of policies will make up that uh, stabilization policy. So the first policy is fiscal policy. So this fiscal policy manages the collection and spending of its revenues through the economic policies. Example, the tax rates. So the government will collect tax uh, from the uh, citizens and then they will spend the tax that they have collected uh, through uh, the education uh, industry to the uh, health industry and any other industries that need it. Okay? And then um, monetary policy refers to the uh, uh, controlling, yeah? controlling the size of nation's money supply. Okay. So, the government will have a say, yeah? the, the government can influence the ability and the willingness yeah, of the banks throughout the country to lend money to people. All right. And then, uh, however, by, uh, by increasing the money supply, it might lead to inflation. So, the government needs to control yeah, the, the, the money supply so that okay, it will... Uh, reduce eh, the the inflation rate and that's all for this chapter thank you